was lost in darkest night, yet thought I knew. Thank you, ladies. Wow, that was beautiful. Uh, not only that Sarah and Lindsay and Bethany, they, they sing beautifully, but they're great teachers. And we are blessed and privileged to have them at Westwood Christian School as well as First Baptist of Westwood Lake. Good morning. Well, I miss that today. Good morning. <laughs> and i uh, love to welcome you to the services uh, each Sunday. And uh, you, you guys look great. Uh, and we praise God for your presence here. Would you please take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Mark, Mark uh, chapter 4. And would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? We'll read together tonight. You don't want to miss it tonight. Tonight, we have a great preacher tonight. The night is Brother Schroeder, and he'll be preaching and delivering God's Word. And you definitely don't want to miss, I don't want to miss uh, the great preaching of our brother as he preaches God's Word. I'd like to encourage you to be here and receive a blessing tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, Mark chapter 4. If you please turn there with me to Mark chapter 4. And we are going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. And then we'll jump. I like to jump around. Then we'll jump uh, to verse 23 and 24. Let's, uh, let's all read together, if you don't mind, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. Ready? And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Please look at verse 23 and 24. And please read with me. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, 
Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you the hear shall be more given. Be given. I'll look please at chapter 7. Mark chapter 7 and verse 14. Ready? Together. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Please be seated. Are you listening? Are you listening to God? I mean, are you really, really listening to Him? Because I have uh, good news for you from, from this great book, The Word of God. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. Well, Brother Regal, I'm, I'm 65. I don't know about that. God has a plan for you. I'm, um, I'm 80 years old. I don't know. God has a plan for you. Mrs. Gogenauer's uh, birthday was last week, and uh, pastor, our pastor, Pastor Mortensen, uh, and myself, we called her to wish her happy birthday. And uh, I don't know exactly how old Mrs. Gogenauer is. I don't want to say it here. I don't know. But I do know that pastor, preacher, uh, preacher, uh, Pastor Gogenauer, he's 93 years old. And uh, you would think that as a 93-year-old man and his wife, I don't know how old she is, uh, but they're, they're, I guess they're pretty close to each other. Uh, you would think that they would be somewhere sitting on a rocking chair, looking out and watching the butterflies go by, and the little bird house, and the tweet tweet and all things like that. Uh, no, uh, Pastor Gorgonauer was serving the Lord. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Gorgonauer said to us over the phone that on, the, on Thursday, this past Thursday, they spent 12 hours... 12 hours witnessing and winning souls for Christ. He's 93, and she's, I don't know, but she just had a birthday. And yes, you would say, now they have to just completely, you know, slow down and whatever. God has a plan for their lives. Even at the age of 93, God has a plan for him. Are you listening? God has a plan for you. In Psalms chapter 32 and verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. To acknowledge the Lord means we consider what He says. We recognize His great power. We trust His guidance. To acknowledge the Lord means that we follow His instruction. He is continually, continually seeking to guide us, but we're not listening to His voice. As you come Sunday morning, He's seeking to guide you. As you come tonight in the evening service, He's seeking to guide you. As you go to Sunday school hour, He's seeking to guide you. As you go to one tonight, uh, He's seeking to guide you. As you go home and you read God's holy word and you open it, He is seeking to guide you. He wants to guide you because He has a beautiful, marvelous, amazing plan for your life. Are you listening? Are you listening to Him? This morning, just for a few moments, I would like to talk to you about listening to God. Listening to God because God Almighty is speaking. Let's pray. Father, as we come to Your presence this morning, I want to thank You, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity, the privilege, the honor the blessing of standing in this pulpit and facing this amazing audience of the First Baptist Church of Westwood Lake. As I was uh, talking to Pastor Marcus just a few minutes ago, Lord Jesus, I was telling him what an honor to preach God's Word. What a blessing. None of us deserve this privilege by all, by all means. 
And we know that, Lord, so I, that's why I ask you, Father, that you would help me to help others. Help me, Lord, to uh, communicate to my brothers and sister uh, in Christ and to those who are, have not yet tasted of your grace the plan, what you, what, what you have for their lives. Lord, I just pray that you'll lead now and help me. In Jesus' name, amen. When he speaks, we need to listen. You know, when Jesus spoke, he, he wanted people to listen to him. He didn't just want to speak to the walls. He wanted to talk to their hearts. One of the things that I've learned, as, and I'm still learning as a teacher, is that for the students to really, really understand the material and to get something out of, the, out of their education is not simply just coming to school and have uh, uh, their subject book in front of them and their notebook and look intelligent. No, they need to listen. They need to comprehend. They need to listen what the teacher is telling them. And God Almighty is talking to us even this morning. In Mark, if you go back please to Mark, the Gospel of Mark chapter 4, and in verses 1, 2, and 3, Jesus was teaching a large crowd. That's what it says there. And then in verse 3, he says, Hearken! In other words, he said, listen to this. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Listen to this parable that I'm about to give you. In Mark chapter 4, uh, the same chapter, verse 23 and, and 24, uh, he says here, if anyone has uh, here to hear, hear this. Take heed what I am telling you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. He's stressing the idea of paying attention. <laughs> Pay attention. God Almighty is talking. In chapter 7, going back to chapter 7, which we just read uh, a few minutes ago. And in verse 14, he says here, and, he, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me. In other words, listen to me. In John chapter 3, in verse 3, Jesus faced Nicodemus, or Nicodemus faced Jesus. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, one to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you realize that the words verily, verily appears 25 times by Christ in the, book of, in the gospel of John? You know what he's actually saying? He's emphasizing. He's saying, listen to me, listen to me. Hey, listen to me. When we have fire drills, and we had one in our school this week. I love fire drills. No, I'm only kidding. I do not. <laughs> but I tell you, when we have fire drills, one of the things that's, in, that's an important ingredient and it's necessary is for what? The students to be what? To be quiet. Why? For listen for further instructions. If it's a real, real, genuine, God forbid, ever, fire or other disaster, the students need to be quiet so they can what? Listen to the instruction and do exactly what our administrator or whoever's out there leading us. And folks, God is the same. God talks to us. By the way, he's talking today. And he's talking to you. And he's talking to me because he has an amazing plan for our life. Again, are we listening? Jesus said, hey, I'm speaking to you. Listen. When Jesus spoke, he wanted others to listen. I have a question. How does God speak to us today? That's what I want to know. How does he speak to me? And how will he speak to you? I want to give you several ways that I know how God speaks to us. Number one, primarily, he speaks to us through his word right here. That's why we should never, ever reject his word. That's why his word should not be somewhere where there's spider webs or dust covering it. But if there is a book that is used, if there's a book that's worn out, it should be God's holy word. You should read it 
because the Bible is the inerrant, authoritative Word of God. It is the only source of truth. Read it, and as you are, you are hearing directly from the Lord. This morning, a group of men got together right here in the front, and we started reading the Word of God. We were hearing directly from God. God was speaking to me. God was speaking to them. It is not just an old book. It is a precious book. It is a book that's alive. It's not a textbook. It's God's holy word. And as you open it, and as you read, whatever you read, God is speaking to you. So primarily, primarily, He speaks to us through His word. But He also speaks to us through prayer. Now listen carefully. I don't mean these little prayer that God is great, God is good, let us thank Him for our food in Jesus' name, amen. I'm not talking about, Lord, let that lay me down to sleep, and I don't know the rest of the prayer. And <laughs> All right, but I know it's sweet and short. I'm talking about really talking to God. Because as you really talk to God, there's one important thing that I want to tell you. We need to be still. When you're talking to God, be still. Now, you cannot talk to God while the TV's on. Now, I know you can talk to God anywhere. I know you can talk to God while you're driving. Please make sure your eyes are open. I know you can talk to God while even other people are. But prayer is not just a matter of communicating with God. Prayer is, Lord, what do you want me to do? And you will not hear His voice inside your heart unless you're still. When you pray, we need to be still because as you're praying, God is talking to you. God is talking to me. How many times have I stood before God and as I was praying, God all of a sudden, and nobody was there and everything was calm and collective, and I went somewhere where I could be by myself, between God and myself, we, and I stood still, and while I was praying, God Almighty communicated or brought me somebody in my mind, in my heart, and then I started praying for that person. Or started directing me somewhere else in my life. When we pray, we pray and be still as we pray. Not only is it through His Word that He talks to us, and also through prayer, but the Lord may speak through us through our circumstances. When a situation is painful, you know what I'm talking about. We must remember that hearing from God is more important than our own comfort or pleasure. He uses difficulties, he really does, and suffering to get our attention. A man that I, we love and appreciate, an amazing teacher, and he taught here at Westbrook Christian School for 13 years, I'm talking about Marcus Rodriguez. He taught Bible, and I think he taught something else while he was here at one or two times, but primarily Bible. And he would say to me, he would say, um, he would call me people. I don't know why, but he would call me people. He said, people? He said, do you know how I get the, the kids' attention once in a while when they're all like a little bit fuzzy and they just came from lunch and they have a sugar high and, and they want to go crazy, you know? And, or, or they're just... All of a sudden, they're in La La Land. You know what I do? I said, no, what do you do? I said, I take this big book. You see this big book here? I said, yes. And I walk around, and I just, and my voice is mellow. And all of a sudden, I let the book drop. Bah! And everybody goes, ah! And then I said, now that I have your attention, point number two. You know, well, that's, that's Marcus. <laughs> I don't do that, but that's, that's Marcus. But, you know, he got their attention. Well, God has different ways to get our attention, doesn't he? Because he talks us through his word. There's no doubt about it. He talks to us through prayer. But sometimes we just say we're not going to hear because we're not going to pray. And we're not going to hear because we're not going to read. And so God sometimes speaks to us through our circumstances. Maybe through a, a death of a, of a loved one. Maybe through our, a sickness that we or others may have. Maybe through a difficult, difficult, uh, tough decision or experience that we have to go through. And through that, God Almighty will use to speak to us. 
God is speaking to us. Sometimes God speaks to us through other people. I mean, I've man, praise God how the Lord uses other people to encourage me and encourage other. Sometimes it's through encouragement. May I say this to you? We need to be encouraged every day. We need to encourage, uh, uh, we need encouragement. We need to help each other every day. And sometimes uh, uh, God speaks through people that come to our life and, uh, and maybe just giving us a hug uh, or giving us a little gift or giving us an advice. Is God is using us that to talk to us. Sometimes through affirmation or, or confirmation about something that we're, that we're looking for, waiting for. So those are ways that God speaks to us. He's speaking today to us. But I have another question about this, and this, how can we identify God's voice? How do we know that this is God's voice? I mean, if we need to listen to God, it's because God has a plan for our lives, wherever you're at, and whatever you're doing, God has a plan for your life. Your life is not to be wasted. God left you here for a reason, praise God. And it's for His honor and for His glory. And you will never glorify Him or praise Him or lift up His precious name unless you know what He wants you to do in life. But you need to listen. But how can we know, how can we identify God's voice? Remember little Samuel, little Sam? In 1 Samuel chapter 3, Samuel, a little boy, and all of a sudden he heard, Samuel, Samuel! And he got up on his bed and he went over there and said to the high priest who had practically raised him in the temple. Uh, and uh, he said, yes, sir, uh, you called me. And uh, the high priest said, uh, I didn't call you. Go back, go back, go back to sleep, young man. Go back to your bed. Yes, sir. He went back and then, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, got up again. He said, sir, truly, you've called me. I mean, I'm not hearing things. I know I heard a voice. I'm not sure if it was your voice. I heard it. Go back. Then, Again, Samuel, Samuel, and truly, he got trouble, and he, he was such an obedient young man. He went back and said, sir, don't get mad, but you call me, right? No, but I think I know who's calling you. I think God is calling you. Eli had recognized the voice of God, but the Bible says that at that time, no one really had recognized or even known the Lord. And Eli said, go back, and if you hear it again, say, your servant heareth you. And he surely went back. And can you imagine, as you would go back, you would say, boy, I'm going to hear, next time I hear something, this is actually God speaking to me. Can you imagine that? And he heard it again. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, your servant heareth you. And it was God speaking to him. His voice. How can we identify God's voice. Remember Elijah the prophet? How he defeated the prophets of Baal? He said, God, send fire from heaven, consume them in their sacrifice. Boom. And he did. And he defeated it. I think it was 400, 500, or 600, something like that. And then came Jezebel, wicked queen, and said, oh, you destroyed our prophets, huh? And she said, I'm going to destroy you. And he could face all those prophets, by my soul, he ran from a woman. I mean, he could deface her. It's only one. Not 400 Jezebels, just one. And he ran for his life. He took off. And the Bible says he went to different places. He went to a cave all of a sudden. And there was an earthquake. <laughs> Tremble. But it was not God. And there was a fire. But it was not God. There was a wind. Wind. And there was not God. But then a still, small what? Voice. And it was God, and God said, Elijah, what are you doing? You don't have to run away from that wicked woman. You're not the only one. There's many more that are serving me. Go back and do what you're supposed to do. How can we identify God's voice? God's voice is always consistent with this word right here. If it's not consistent with the word, don't you hear it. Don't you pay attention to it. You've got, we have a lot of people out there that will try to mix truth with lies and they do a pretty good job on it. Folks, if it's not here, 
Don't you listen to it. Listen, God's voice is always consistent with His Word. His voice is always quiet. And the Lord always speaks clearly if you're listening. Now, why is it that we don't listen to God today? Let me give you several reasons why people, believe it or not, don't listen to God today. The first one is, we may not believe that the Lord speaks today. We just think God speaks today. No, He did back in the Old Testament. He did back in the New Testament. He did back in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, but on the 90s. But uh, I don't think God really speaks today. Uh, I don't see it. Well, let me tell you something right now. God does speak today. He does. Others may, why is it that they don't listen to God is because we might believe that uh, they're afraid of what He will say to them. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I really want to hear His voice in my heart. Uh, I may have to do something that I, I may have to leave my job. I may have to move. I may have to break some of these habits of mine that are, that are tearing me down, that are destroying my testimony, that is not, hurt, that is not helping me. Or we could be angry with the Lord. How could God allow this to me, to someone? Why do I want to listen to Him? Or we could have a rebellious spirit. I'm not going to listen to Him. Go on, preacher. Preach it. Teach it. Yell it if you have to. Emphasize it. But I am not going to listen to God. And there are people like that probably even here this morning. Now, what are the consequences of not listening to God? And this is sad, but it's true. Number one, we won't receive His guidance. Remember I said in the beginning of the message, God is talking to you. God is talking to you. Not just to talk to you. Not just to fellowship with you. It's even more important than that, than talking and fellowshipping. Yes, He desires our fellowship. He did with Adam and Eve. He does with you through Christ. Yes, He just loves to just have a conversation with you, but it's more important than that. He wants to guide you because He wants to reveal to you what is His will for your life. Regardless of your age, regardless of your situation, financially or health-wise. There's a, a young man in Monterrey, Mexico, that brother uh, Ray here has told me that I think he has no legs. Is that correct, my brother? He has no legs, uh, and I think he uses a skateboard. Is that correct? And he leans on the skateboard, and he spends uh, seven or eight hours on Saturdays. Tell me if that's, if that's correct. Seven or eight hours on Saturday knocking on door in that city and passing out scripture. So it doesn't matter of your health situation. The important, the important thing is, I want to know what God wants me to do in my life and do it and glorify Him and honor Him. But before you do that, you need to listen. Well, what happens when you, you turn a deaf ear to the Lord and you say, you know what, I'm just not going to do it. We won't receive His guidance. And so, how many people waste their life? I wonder how many. I wonder how many they reach their 60s or their 70s or their 80s or plus. And yes, beautiful. Uh, look at that. 98, 99 years old. And then, then they passed away. What a long life. But did they use that life for God's honor and glory? Was it meaningful for the Lord? Were they able to do God's will for their life? Or they never found out? I wonder what God really wanted me to do. You see, we won't recognize His guidance. Secondly, we'll listen to the wrong voices. When you don't listen to the right voice, you'll listen to the wrong advice. And thirdly, others will suffer. Others will suffer. Folks, when you sin, not only will you pay the consequences unless you repent, but others who are around you will also pay the consequences of that sin. And so I wonder how many 
children and teenagers now and young folks are out of God's will. They don't go to church like they used to at one time. They don't even read their Bibles. Because back then, years ago, their parents, they turned a deaf ear to the Lord. And they never did God's will for their lives. And not only did it affect them, mom and dad, but it affected the generation to come, and other generation to come, and others, and others, and others. In my office, if you go there, it's an amazing office. No, I'm only kidding. It's a little office. But if you go there, you'll notice that behind my desk, behind my chair, there are no trophies. There are no ribbons. If there were, probably be fifth place or sixth place. No, ribbons. There are no any outstanding uh, writing from somebody. But if you go there, you will notice it's my family. I cover it all with my family. And some of my friends that gave me their pictures, you know, and I put it there. And every time I go there and I realize I better do what's right before God Almighty because of all these people, their eyes are upon me. Their eyes are looking at me. My children are looking at me. My children's mates, their husbands and wives, they're looking at me. My grandkids are looking at me. And in the future, if we're still around, when that happens, my great-grandkids will be looking at me. My wife is looking at me. Uh, my mother-in-law is looking, and so on, and so on, and so on. Hey, not only me, you too. So when you listen to God, and you do what you need to do, are you listening? God not only will bless you, God will bless them too. God will bless them too. Because they'll know how, how much you love God, how much you love this book. And guess what? They'll be reading it like you read it. They'll be praying like you pray. They'll be walking with God like you walk with God. But it all starts by you listening to God and doing what He wants you to do. Now you say, well, that didn't happen to me. I'm just telling you right now. God will bless others as you obey Him and walk with him. But then you have the opposite. Then you have the opposite. Are you listening to God this morning? Are you listening to him?